the Burundi killer, the King of Crocs, the King of the Nile. These are just some of the names given to the most infamous man-eating crocodile of Africa, Gustave. G'day all, I'm here to talk to you today about Burundi's killer crocodile, Gustave, a notorious reptile whose residence is in the rivers of Burundi, Africa. He's equally known for his massive size as he is his attack on humans. Gustave first came into notoriety in the early 2000s when he began attacking people and livestock in Burundi, Africa. His enormous size and ferocious behavior quickly made him a legend in the region, with many people beginning to fear him as a common man-eater. Since then, Gustave has been the subject of numerous documentaries, news stories, and even Hollywood movies, which has been added to his fame and reputation as one of the most dangerous and fascinated crocodiles in the world. Gustave's estimated size is between 18 to 20 feet in length and weighing approximately over 2,000 pounds, which dwarfs the average of 15 feet and 900 pounds of the average Nile crocodile. These estimates come from a mix of eyewitnesses, photographs, and scientific analysis. This included studying bite marks on Gustave's prey, which reflected that he was likely larger than even the largest Nile crocodiles. Some people have even suggested that he's in the 25 to 30 foot mark. However, I just don't believe this is the case, and it's more likely that people are just, I don't know, misconstruing and can't tell the difference between a 20 foot croc and a 30 foot croc, which I could hardly blame. It'd be a monstrous sight to see, and it's a giant nonetheless. Furthermore, the original age estimates of Gustave put him at around 100 years old, but when looking at photos and recorded footage of him, it's very evident that he has a relatively healthy set of teeth, which puts him at the more likely age of 68 years old in today's day of 2023. Bear in mind you, these crocs can live well over 80 years, so there's still plenty of life in this guy. Despite his massive size, Gustave has been incredibly elusive and has been evading capture for decades now. This was made evident in the 2004 documentary Capturing the Killer Croc, led by herpetologist Patrice Fay, who over a two month duration tried to capture the croc, which was ultimately unsuccessful. They tried as hard as they could, even building a 30 foot trap and using dead and live bait. Yet it seemed Gustave wanted no part of it, or at the very least, the trap failed, given that the live goat that was the last trap used was moved with the goat being missing. It is possible, given enough time, that the mission would have worked out, but due to the brewing civil war, it would have been unsafe to continue after the two month period, and hence they were forced to leave. Now, many people believe Gustave's responsible for over 300 deaths, but other people think that this number is merely an exaggeration. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if Gustave was responsible for at least a large number of these world casualties, yet I think 300 is a bit of an exaggeration, with many of those deaths, well, being blamed on Gustave without proper evidence. I mean, look at the number of crocodiles that would be in these lakes and rivers. I do think that it's a bit unfair and doesn't really make sense considering a crocodile being 10 feet plus could become a man eater. According to the same herpetologist, they admitted that it is more likely that the only responsible deaths on Gustave was approximately 60, which don't get me wrong, that is still a very large number of deaths, but nowhere near the 300 mark. Instead, I think it's far more likely that with the war occurring at the time, many of the bodies were tossed into the river and hence eaten by the crocodiles, which then resulted in them being blamed for the fatalities. A standing out point of Gustave is obviously his appearance, for not only his size, but the scarring along his body. Over his long life, he is scarring from all sorts of attacks, including spears, bullets, and possibly even hippos. Now you might ask, how does Gustave survive being shot at so often that there's evidence scarring on him? It's pretty extreme. Well, I like to say it's a mix of things, but mainly it's due to his sheer size, which is suggested to result in the bullets either being lodged into his skin or rather bouncing off instead of killing him. And there's also the fact that people aren't exactly the best shots after seeing a 20 foot man-eating crocodile. So you can't really blame their mental being off for, you know, either missing or not getting him in direct areas. Also, there's even stories of soldiers having to resort to tossing grenades into rivers in order to scare off Gustave from the area, with some people even saying that the grenades don't even scare the croc, but rather just piss him off so he just leaves. I'll even add another story being that a soldier apparently shot a rocket launcher to try killing Gustave. That's right, a whole rocket launcher, an RPG to kill this croc. 
and yet he still lived. Do I think that this story might be a bit of an exaggeration? Yes, I mean, I don't think there's really any animal living alive that can directly tank a rocket launcher and walk off. I just think it's simply not possible. But I think this is interesting because it shows the myth and legend that surrounds Gustav the Crocodile. I mean, not only are these stories prevalent, people actually believe that Gustav eats the bullets shot at him, that he's that powerful that he eats the bullets. I mean, clearly this is not the case because animals can't just eat bullets. But still, this shows how prevalent he is and how feared he is in the region. Due to his sheer size, it's been suggested that Gustav himself isn't as capable of hunting the more agile prey that his smaller counterparts are able to do. So these would include fish, gazelles, antelope, zebras, all those sorts of animals. Instead, it's been suggested that he hunts both large buffalo and hippopotamuses, which would be extremely impressive if that's the case. You know, hunting hippos, the most dangerous animal in the savannah. Well, I mean, the most aggressive at least. Hunters legitimately use rocket launchers to try to take out hippopotamuses because they're that dangerous. And apparently Gustav just eats them. That is pretty, pretty extreme, pretty impressive to say the least. Although I do hate to uh, put a down on this story, this could be an exaggeration. You should know actual evidence of Gustav directly fighting a hippo and hence eating it, being seen. Though again, to sort of counter act the counteracting point, there is this recording of Gustav nonchalantly crawling his way into a river in front of a large hippo with him not even budging his pathway. I mean, look at the hippo's eyes. He does not look happy to be near Gustav. So maybe the myths of him hunting these giant animals are true, because you don't just walk up on the most aggressive animal in the African savannah without being extremely confident in yourself. And this issue of his size reducing his speed also lends credence to why Gustav might hunt humans. Being so large and losing the agility and speed of his lesser counterparts would result in a reduced chance of being successful in hunting the more mobile animals. Are humans uh, mobile? No. They're quite quick and easy prey, almost like a drive through for these giant predators. And hence, it would explain why Gustav would be possibly hunting us. Finally, according to a Burundi magazine, Gustav was apparently shot and killed in 2019. However, I pretty much doubt any credibility of this. And I doubt it not because I think this bulletproof crocodile is immortal, but rather if you kill a highly popularized man-eater measuring 20 feet, 2,000 pounds, I'm pretty sure you'd be sharing those photos and writing stories about that everywhere, which clearly hasn't happened. There's been no body found, no person owning up to it, no, not even photos. So I just think this story is false. It's more likely that with the expansion of human civilization into his territory, he was driven off where prey would be more plentiful and he'd have less issues with people, you know, actively shooting at him and tossing grit. Although I do want to sort of wrap up with saying like, although I do say all these are big things about Gustav, like him tanking bullets and rocket launchers shooting at him and all these sort of things and taking on hippopotamuses and eating them. We got to realize that these are actual animals and not just fiction. They're not a book, they're not just a video, they're merely just trying to survive and we shouldn't monstrosize them if that's even a word next time.